Before we understand the power of leverage, we need to understand the concept of cash on cash return. Let's say Dr. Mom buys a single family home for renting, paying $100,000 in cash. The rent for the home is $1,000 per month. The total cash flow per year is the difference between income and expenses. The income in this case is the rent paid, which is $12,000 per year. Since she paid for the property in cash, she does not have any mortgage expenses. She'll spend about $4,000 on property tax, insurance, and property management. Her total cash flow on year one is $8,000, which is $12,000 minus $4,000. Cash on cash return is the total cash earned in a year on your cash investment. Dr. Mom invested $100,000 in cash and earned $8,000. Her cash on cash return is 8%. Not bad, but not great either. Let's see what happens when she uses leverage. She buys the same property for $100,000, but this time she gets a mortgage from the bank for $80,000 and puts $20,000 of, of her own money. Now she has an additional expense of $4,000 for mortgage payment. Therefore, her cash flow is $4,000 per year, which is less than if she had bought the property with cash. What happens to her cash on cash return? Even though she had only $4,000 of cash flow, she put in only $20,000. Now her cash on cash return is 20%, instead of 8% with full cash purchase. That's the power of leverage. Now we can look at a simplified example of how leverage is advantageous in real estate syndications. Say we buy an apartment complex for $10 million. The bank gives $7 million and limited partners invest $3 million. We will get cash flow each year and pay mortgage and expenses using rent paid by tenants. On year 5, we sell the apartment for $13 million. If you paid for the apartment with cash, our return would be 33%. But since we used leverage, we first pay back $7 million to the bank. We are left with $6 million which is essentially 100% return instead of 33% return.